Okay, welcome everyone. Let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. We're gonna cover really what's going on today. I think we're kind of right on the edge of a breakdown here in the market. So I wanna point out what I'm seeing. Stay tuned, we're gonna go through all the charts. Again, everything's using technical analysis here. We're not using fundamental analysis. We're not using you know, biased opinion. Really just trying to read the charts for what they're showing us. All right, so drop me a thumbs up as I go. Uh, if you guys find value, the sooner you hit that thumbs up, I think it's better for the channel. So I do appreciate that, guys. Let's get right into it. Triple Qs. All right, we're starting off, starting off with the tech sector again. Just it, there, it's kind of the these are the mega cap tech stocks. So they they have a lot of pull in terms of where the market goes. Uh, I have one subscriber who who does like to mention that the financials are dictate where the tech stocks go. And, and you know, to to certain to a certain extent, that's very true. I understand that the financials have uh, fundamental, um, refl you know, they, they basically play in terms of where the credit goes. So as the money's flowing, then markets go up, and that makes sense. All right, fundamentally, that does make sense. However, even if the you still have to wait for the for the tech stocks to sell off because. That, you know, you need to wait for the sell signals in the mega cap tech stocks. It's just mathematics. It's the fact that the mega cap tech stocks are heavily weighted in the indices. And so regardless, if the financials are selling off, maybe the tech stocks will sell off, but I prefer to wait for the sell signals in the actual mega cap tech stocks and the triple Qs uh, to, um, you know, uh, read the market and take any positions. Okay, guys, so mega cap tech here. This is triple Q's uptrend line on the hourly right here. Just been walking up that we recently we recently uh, popped above the 200 day simple moving average. We're back below it now. So we that you know, that was kind of just a, a brief pop above it. And looking at what's going on in the momentum indicators, we've got negative divergence. All right on the hourly chart. So there's your negative divergence. Again, if you're unfamiliar with these concepts as I go along, check out my stock market technical analysis course. I go into detail on all these concepts. It's about four to five hours worth of video training and I priced it at 99 bucks, so it's affordable to all. Check that out, link in the description below, okay? Now, we're sitting right here on this gap support. There's a little gap right here. It's about 365.05, all right? So that's where it's sold down to. We might hold here today but I am expecting us to uh, break down very relatively soon. It might even happen today, I don't know, but watch for that. Watch for that level to give way, and if we see that break, then likely we've started the downtrend, or at least a minor downtrend um, in, in triple Qs. Next level of support I see is right about 352.38, so we'll probably get a reaction right there, but if we break, maybe we head down to that level. All right, so that's kind of the short-term analysis. Looking at the daily chart though, again, you can see the fact that this is your uptrend line in 2021 here. All right, and then this red line right down here, this uptrend line on the red is your bull market price channel um, going all the way back to 2009 in the tech sector. So there it is, that's kind of the top of the channel. We recently hit it. We've had a pretty impulsive rally. I am expecting this rally to fizzle out and us to continue the downtrend. So again, I'm trading the market as if we started a downtrend, we're making lower highs, lower lows like this, we have a counter trend rally, and then we resume the downtrend. Okay, that's how I'm trading the market. Uh, you know, bulls in the market, they see this as just a mere, they see this as an uptrend here. We had a correction and now we're resuming the uptrend. All right, so there's the differing opinions. Again, we'll continue to read the charts to tell us where things might go. I'm looking for more downside. Apple, all right, so Apple being kind of a major player in the tech stocks, if I go to the hourly chart, you can see here, basically we've got clean negative divergence. Uh, I gotta kinda just grab that and show you. So there it is, negative divergence on both momentum indicators. So that tells me that price is likely about to start to roll over, but it doesn't have to. All right, it just tells me the conditions are there for a sell-off. And we had an uptrend line. This is the counter trend rally that I'm viewing in Apple. Broke the trend here, didn't really go anywhere though. Kind of drifted sideways, ran up for a back test, and and then, you know, that's you know, that's basically it. We've done a back test, we're starting to build negative divergence, and it looks like we're starting to roll over. So I'm looking for more downside on Apple. All right, looking at the daily chart on Apple. If we get a pullback, I think the minimum pullback would probably be down to about right there at 169. Okay, 
that is a clean level of there are a lot of reactions on that level. You can see this trend line. You got one here, here, there's another, and then several right through here. Now we're starting to, we've definitely chopped through it. So it's not as relevant as it has been in the past, but I would see us coming down to there at a minimum. All right, most likely I'm looking for a lot more downside. What I'm kind of looking at is we've started a downtrend here. This counter trend rally, uh, was basically designed as a short covering rally and a buy the dip rally to make, you know, basically keep the bulls in the in their longs. And you can see we've rallied close to the all time highs. Maybe we roll over right here and don't actually break out to a new all time high. If we start seeing all time highs in Apple, um, it's very likely we're going to see all time highs in triple Qs. So we have to keep an eye on that. All right, things to watch for there. IWM small caps, again, on the daily chart, the key level I'm really watching is right there, 209, all right? 209 and some change, give or take. And you can see that that for over a year was a support zone, all right? Support here, support here. Once we broke, support becomes resistance. So we broke, there's your sell signal and resistance failed, hit it again, you know, not a slight reaction, but recently you can see they popped above it rallied it up, made it look like, okay, we're all, all good, breaking back into the range. Very next day, sell down, close back below it. So we're not impulsively below it yet, but we are trading we are trading below that. So that breakout there, that which you know kind of looked like a breakout, was a false breakout as of right now, all right? And again, that breakout came, if you look at the hourly chart here, came with negative divergence. So there's the breakout right here. And basically that breakout was a new higher high in price. So here's your former high. Again, we're looking at the hourly chart. So just a very short time frame. But this is just giving us, an, you have to narrow it down when you're looking for the turn in a market. You really want to start narrowing it down to you know, understand when that turn is taking place or when the probability of a turn taking place is there. And we have that right now. So you can see there's your former high back on March 22nd. And then we made this uh, new higher high March 29th, but the momentum is less, all right? See, the momentum is going down, all right? And this kind of an equal, it's anything equal or less is negative divergence. So that tells me that this breakout had a high probability of failing, and so far it has failed. So, and then the price action today is kind of interesting too. You can see today just zeroing, zeroing it right in. We rallied right up to that 209, rejected. Tried it again, didn't, couldn't quite get there, rejected. Now, the next two candles, we're seeing more selling. It looks like the, they, they're kind of done trying to rally it in there. But, all right, so that's what I see. I see more downside. We got a gap to fill, so I think we'll probably hit that today. It's right here at um, 206.26. So I put high probability that we're going to probably park, park it right there by the end of the day, or at a minimum hit that by the end of the day. All right, moving on. Okay, oil, oil futures. So we heard some news today about Biden talking about releasing some strategic oil reserves. And so that's adding supply to the market. There was a knee jerk reaction to sell down, but ultimately we just sold right to support and support has held. So looking at the daily chart here on the oil futures, you can see we're in an uptrend, uh, big impulsive rally, pull down to support, bounce, pull down to support. And then today's price action was just a pull down to support and it's held. So nothing technically is broken in oil. Oil still looks bullish and looking for more highs. You know, until we see a change in the market, I see more highs coming. Here's gold bullion. Again, gold is just kind of trading. It's just sideways right now. So we're just kind of waiting which way it's going to resolve. I Again, we're in the middle of the range. So top of the range is right up here at the all-time highs, about 2,075 or so. And then bottom of the range is this this uh, wedge, the top of this wedge, right down here at about 1830, 1840. Again, that wedge was, we had lots of reactions. It was resistance all through here. Then finally you break out. So we do have a bullish breakout. So that longer term, bigger picture, gold's bullish. It remains bullish. Uh, but we could get a back test, all right? So I don't know which way it's going to go. Could go back test. We could just rally from here. Ultimately, you know, I'm just going to stay long these the gold miners that I'm in because we've got the bigger picture breakout. So whether we get a back test, I'm viewing that as an opportunity to buy the dip. And if we don't get the back test, then I've got positions and we can ride those uh, ride those up. And GDX, the miners, slight. Sorry about that phone call. GDX, the miners, you can see we're in this uptrend here. 
had a brief dip below, but they managed to rally it back up and close above. So if you look at the hourly, you can see we're just kind of treading water. It's just, it's not giving me enough indication that we're gonna, that we're really back testing. We might just be holding on to this trend and we're gonna move higher. So I don't know. I'm gonna stick with the mining positions that I have uh, and let this thing continue to uh, move higher. I don't see any negative divergence either. If you look at the hourly, look at this. You've got negative momentum right there on the RSI and the PPO, and you also have negative price, all right? We didn't make a new higher high in price. We just made it, you know, lower price is kind of trending down, momentum's trending down. So that just tells me it's a, a minor pullback on the way to new highs. Okay, potential trade idea here. Now it's a higher risk and I'll explain why but um, there is a trade set up here. So PANW, Palo Alto, anybody that's been following me knows that we shorted it right at this last peak right up here, caught the move down, got out of the shorts when I got out of a lot of the other shorts as well. And it's had a pretty impulsive, strong rally back up. Now we've rallied into resistance. As, as far as I can tell, looking at the hourly chart, we've got reactions here, reaction here, we had another reaction here, and we're right there at resistance, all right? So, at resistance is an objective area to short at, and especially when you have negative divergence on both momentum indicators. Now it is higher risk because neg negative divergence isn't necessarily a reason to short, but given that we have the divergence and we're at resistance, it's a low risk area to short at. So I'm taking a starting short position, and the way I'm gonna treat this is we're gonna take a small starting short position up here at resistance. If we trade down, to the trend line, most likely I'll probably uh, just hold my short and wait for the break, all right? I'm, I'd be looking for the break at that point. Looking at Palo Alto, you've got big support down here coming off the 2020 lows, support, support. There's another tag, there's another tag, and that they stepped in a little early there. But look for us to trade down and then probably break, all right? So negative divergence at resistance, it is objective to short here for at, at a very minimum, a pullback to the to the support level right here. All right, so that might be, you know, somewhere down there. So Okay, I'm going to keep the video short. So guys, check out the course, drop me a thumbs up. Uh, if I see anything else that's going on towards the end of the day, uh, I'll put out a, a after market video, but I really just wanted to kind of cover cover the basis of what I see going on. Looking for more downside here, so we need to see a few things happen. But we definitely have the setup. We definitely have conditions that are there for the downside to show up. So look for the selling to be impulsive. That's likely how it's going to show up, at least initially, is kind of impulsive. If we don't get it today, maybe we gap down uh, sometime this week. Um, that's what I got. So thanks, guys. Catch you on the next one.